Hello, this is Tony Heller from realclimatescience.com. I've been doing science and engineering professionally for almost 50 years. There's a good chance that I helped design the central processing unit in your computer. I've seen some really good science, and I've also seen some really bad science, particularly over the last 16 years since I started delving into the science of climate. Academic climate science is a catastrophe, but this is a story about good science. This is a graph of Pacific typhoons since 1951, made by my beautiful wife, Kyrie. The frequency of typhoons in the Pacific has been declining for 50 years. You don't need to have a degree in science to make a graph like this. You just have to know how to use a spreadsheet. This is a graph from Ryan Maui showing global tropical accumulated cyclone energy, which has been declining for 30 years. And this is another graph from him showing that the frequency of hurricanes has also declined over the last 30 years. Good science can happen very quickly. This is a tweet which Ryan made two days ago. In 2023, the three-year frequency of global major hurricanes was the lowest on record. This is interesting in itself, but someone else noted something even more interesting. Andy may notice that there's a fairly distinct anti-correlation between sunspots and major hurricane frequency over the last three solar cycles. When solar activity was low, major hurricane frequency was high, and vice versa. When solar activity is high, major hurricane frequency is lower. When someone makes a claim like this, it's important to have it peer-reviewed, and that's exactly what I did. I checked Andy's work, and sure enough, that anti-correlation is there. It is possible that this is just a coincidence, but it's certainly worthy of further research. These discoveries were just made over a period of a day or two. Now let's compare that to academic research. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global warming will likely lead to more intense hurricanes with higher wind speeds and more precipitation. But that theory isn't supported by any evidence. According to NOAA, last year was the hottest year on record, and they also had the lowest major hurricane activity. And here's a story from NPR, which probably doesn't have any actual scientists on their staff. NPR is trying to raise hysteria about fossil fuels, and they make up fake statistics like this in order to push that agenda. Here's a story from 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. Is global warming making hurricanes more ferocious? New research suggests the answer is yes. The chief scientist at the National Hurricane Center, Dr. Chris Lanzi, disagreed. He said the conclusions are contingent on a very large bias removal that is large or larger than the global warming signal itself. In 2007, he explained why global warming may actually make hurricanes less powerful. And that downward trend is exactly what we're seeing. The press doesn't care about reality or what the chief scientist at the National Hurricane Center says because what he's saying doesn't support their anti-fossil fuel agenda. There are 4,338 hurricanes since 1851 in NOAA's database. But people pushing the climate scam want you to believe that the last three were caused by you driving your SUV or eating meat. President Eisenhower warned about the destruction of academic science in his 1961 farewell speech. He warned that government funding was going to cause science to become political and that would in turn corrupt public policy. Akin to and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in our industrial military posture has been the technological revolution during recent decades. In this revolution, research has become central. It also becomes more formalized, complex, and costly. A steadily increasing share is conducted for, by, or at the direction of the federal government. Today, the solitary inventor, tinkering in his shop, has been overshadowed by task forces of scientists in laboratories and testing fields. In the same fashion, the free university, historically the fountainhead of free ideas and scientific discovery, has experienced a revolution in the conduct of research, partly because of the huge costs involved, a government contract becomes virtually a substitute 
for intellectual curiosity. For every old blackboard, there are now hundreds of new electronic computers. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and is gravely to be regarded. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. Intellectual curiosity, as President Eisenhower mentioned, would likely lead an actual scientist to want to explore the relationship between solar activity and major hurricane frequency. But you're unlikely to get much funding studying the relationship between solar activity and climate because people providing the funding want to see a relationship with carbon dioxide. This is exactly the type of situation which President Eisenhower warned about over 60 years ago. Scientific research is being driven by funding, not by science. Richard Horton, the longtime editor of the Lancet Journal, said, The case against science is straightforward. Much of the scientific literature, perhaps half, may simply be untrue, afflicted by studies with small sample sizes, tiny effects, invalid exploratory analyses, and flagrant conflicts of interest, together with an obsession for pursuing fashionable trends of dubious importance, science has taken a turn towards darkness. As one participant put it, poor methods get results. Again, this is what Eisenhower warned about. If half of the peer-reviewed literature is false, that means that peer review is no better than a coin toss. The longtime editor of the New England Journal of Medicine said, it is simply no longer possible to believe much of the clinical research that is published or to rely on the judgment of trusted physicians or authoritative medical guidelines. I take no pleasure in this conclusion, which I reach slowly and reluctantly over my two decades as editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. The bottom line is that academic research is broken, and particularly with climate science. As far as I can tell, most of it is of no value at all. But you can see good science happening in real time on the internet coming from people like my wife Kyrie, Ryan Maui, and Andy May. And it's essential that each of us become knowledgeable enough to do our own peer review. There's a lot of nonsense out on the internet too, so people involved in this process need to be able to distinguish between the good and the bad. I'm currently developing some new data science tools, which I've been using extensively in my recent videos, and they've been very helpful. We need to take science back from the frauds in academia who have been corrupting it. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on climate junk science for almost 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.